Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The leaders of Israel's two main parties, Likud and Kadima, have both claimed victory in an early general election. In a few minutes, we'll turn to analysis of the election results, but first we go to former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. His latest book is We Can Have Peace in the Holy Land, a plan that will work. President Carter says he wrote the book because President Obama is, quote, facing a major opportunity and responsibility to lead an ending conflict between Israel and its neighbors. President Carter writes, quote, the time is now, peace is possible. President Carter's previous book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid, generated a great deal of controversy here in the United States. Last year, he was removed from the speaker's list at the Democratic National Convention in Denver, reportedly because of his outspoken criticism of Israel's policies in the West Bank and Gaza. Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz has publicly claimed he pushed Obama not to allow Carter to speak at the convention. Well, yesterday, I interviewed President Carter about the U.S. role in the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and Israel's invasion of Gaza. President Carter, it's good to have you on Democracy Now! Well, thank you, Amy. It's good to be with you and your millions of viewers and listeners. Well, you've written a new book. It's called We Can Have Peace in the Holy Land, A Plan That Will Work. What is that plan? Well, the plan is a, a diametric opposite from what is uh, the trend now by Israel in the West Bank, and that is to make one state and one nation all the way from the Mediterranean to the uh, to the Jordan River. And that is the two-state solution, which is generally adopted by the United States government, the roadmap for the international community, the United Nations resolutions, and also unanimously by the uh, all 22 Arab nations. That is a two-state solution based on Israel's withdrawal, basically to the 1967 borders, the sharing of uh, Jerusalem and so forth. And that's been spelled out and accepted for a long time. And so I think that the, the, the plan that I outline in my, in my book is one that, were, that has practical aspects of modification of the basic two-state solution that both sides can accept overwhelmingly. One of the key issues would be to leave about half of the Israeli settlers in Palestine where they are, that is, those nearest to Jerusalem, and swap them an equivalent amount of land, say acre for acre, to uh, be used for a corridor a narrow corridor between the West Bank and Gaza, about 35 miles distance. And that could be used to make a train route or either a highway still to be controlled by Israel's security. Uh, I, I discussed this particular plan with Ariel Sharon in January of 2005, and he agreed with me completely on it. President Carter, the Israeli attack on Gaza do you think it set back hopes for peace now? In a way, I think it was a completely unnecessary war. As I wrote an, an editorial for the Washington Post accordingly, because it could have been avoided easily. But in the long term, it may it may actually produce a, a more enthusiastic move toward a comprehensive settlement. In that, for the first time, really in a long time maybe forever, the, the European countries have been directly involved in trying to bring about an accommodation. Uh, the president of France, Sarkozy, has been over there. The, the prime minister of Great Britain, Gordon Brown, has been over there. And the European Union leaders have been over there to work with the Egyptians, who have been negotiating for a number of months now between Israel and Hamas, for instance, to bring about a permanent ceasefire. What Hamas wants uh, is just to have an, an open supply, an adequate supply of food and water and fuel and medicine to go into the one and a half million Palestinians who are imprisoned basically within Gaza. And what the Israelis want is an end of uh, Hamas uh, rockets and, and mortar fire. So those two things can be worked out. So I think it may be that, that this uh, horrendous attack on Gaza will precipitate a more enthusiastic move toward a, toward a uh, comprehensive uh, peace agreement. You say that it could have been avoided. You actually met with Hamas in December. We interviewed Robert Pastor on our broadcast, who went with you. Can you talk about how you think this attack could have been avoided? Well, I went over there first in April, and I met with uh, the leaders of Israel and 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 Qatar and and Egypt and Syria and and and, uh, and, and Hamas, and. Uh, in the past, Hamas has insisted on a ceasefire only if it included the West Bank. 
and Israel was adamantly opposed to that. So I induced Hamas to accept a ceasefire <clears throat> just for Gaza. And the Egyptians negotiated that, and it began the 19th of June, and it was lasted for six months. When toward the end of that period, obviously it was breaking down, so I went back to uh, to the area and met with the Hamas leaders, and they said that they would have a complete ceasefire if Israel would just restore an adequate amount of. Uh, of supplies to the people in Gaza. I couldn't go to the West Bank, but Robert Pastor, whom you interviewed, and also Herrera Balian, who's in charge of the peace program for the Carter Center, went to Israel and asked the Israeli defense leaders, defense department leaders, if they would agree to that. And they, the answer came back the next day that they, they would only supply 15% about one-sixth of the supplies that the people in Gaza needed. So that meant that the, uh, that the ceasefire could not be renewed, and it precipitated uh, rocket fire from Gaza and the attack in, uh, on Gaza by the Israelis. Um, the prosecutor, the ICC prosecutor's office, um, has said that the International Criminal Court uh, at The Hague, the prosecutor for it, has launched a preliminary analysis to establish whether Israel committed war crimes in its offensive against Gaza. Documents also show the Palestinian National Authority has recognized the jurisdiction of the ICC in a move designed to allow investigations of alleged crimes in the Palestinian territories. What are your thoughts about this? I don't believe that Israel has accepted the uh, uh, the uh, authority of the International Criminal Court, so it may be a moot, a moot effort. But I think that if the Palestinians can prevail in, in having an assessment made, then that might uh, clear the air. But I don't think there's any uh, chance of the International Criminal Court imposing any sort of penalties on Israel. Do you think Israeli leaders should be tried? No, I don't. I don't think that would be fruitful. I think it would be a mistake to make make a move of this kind. Uh, but I do I do hope that there will be a, a complete revelation of what has occurred, and that's why I've been involved. That's why I've written a, uh, an op-ed piece for the Washington Post, and that's why I'm talking to you. I, I think that uh, out of this whole uh, uh, debacle or uh, horrible catastrophe that's occurred to the one and a half million folks in Gaza, that uh, a new momentum can be generated, particularly with a new president in the White House and a, and a superb new uh, envoy or negotiator that will lead toward a peace agreement. President Obama has yet to really talk about the Jewish settlements. Uh, the Jewish settlements are a major obstacle to a two-state solution. What is your assessment of the Obama administration and where they stand? Well, uh, I think that Obama has made a, an unprecedented move of an aggressive nature toward a peace agreement in the Middle East that, that escaped his predecessors in, in recent years. And that is, he started working on the Middle East peace problem the first day he was in office. And he's appointed a, a, an envoy uh, who is both superbly qualified as a mediator and knows the area quite well, and also is fairly uh, balanced between Israel and his neighbors, or neutral. Uh, and that's what's required. In fact, uh, George Mitchell has already been condemned by some of the Jewish American organizations because he is neutral or balanced, uh, which has not been the case with the previous envoys. I was neutral or balanced back 30 years ago when I negotiated between Sadat and Begin and brought a peace agreement. And you have to look at both sides in order to have any sort of uh, peace proposals that have a chance to be accepted by both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, but this issue of not mentioning the settlements, although what he has said has gone further than any president in the past. Well, he's only been in office a few days, and I think what happened was that he, that he made a choice of an envoy. He made it clear that his, this issue would be on the top of his agenda. He made calls to the leaders in the Middle East, I think, the day he was inaugurated, as a matter of fact. And then he's appointed a person that can look at both sides. I think that's a very good step forward. He did condemn the uh, suffering of the women and children and, and civilians uh, in Gaza when the attack was underway. But uh, I think he's been waiting to, to let George Mitchell come back from the Middle East, prepare a, a trip report that is to delineate what he uh, found to be facts and what his recommendations might be before Obama makes.